98.7. Now we're talking. Uh, people are saying that the EFF is the story, the real story of this election. How do you feel? Aren't we just? I mean, like, we win as regardless of the results of uh, the elections. Um, I mean, when we started off in 2014, I mean, we were compared to parties that were going to collapse. Uh, and that actually did collapse soon after that. We have literally just grown from strength to strength. I'm so proud to be part of the EFF. I'm so proud of our ground forces like EFF. We cannot do anything. Like I don't think South Africans can understand the power of the youth and most of our ground forces are very young and they are very active. So yes, we, we are. We are the wonderful story. I mean, in 2014, we were the new kids on the block and we were the story of the day and now we maintain the story of the day. So yes, we are very proud of the work we've done. You've brought up the issue of the youth, um, and if you talk to analysts or the IEC, registering that group is a problem. A lot of those people are in the EFF, and they make up a large group of the EFF. Are you a little bit concerned that they might actually not come to the polls? Well, those that are attached to the EFF, they are at the polls as I can speak and we can guarantee that. Um, what I do think needs to happen, there needs to be a change in the process of how we go about encouraging young people to register to vote. Um, you know, just doing door-to-door uh, -door and canvassing and meeting young people on the street and stuff. Some, you know, they really have this attitude, oh, if I vote, it's not going to make any difference and, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, so there's also that level of being able to conscientize them to understand that this vote and your right to vote has come at a high price. The second point is that you can't say it's not going to make a difference because there's pretty much only been two political parties that have been governing in this country, while three because the IFP in local government elections. So you're not given the opportunity to other political parties to be able to govern. So, and then the third, and I think the most important point that we need to make is that if we do not go out to vote, there's the minorities who have a culture of voting. I mean, I was at a lot of uh, predominantly white voting stations this morning. Six o'clock, seven o'clock, the lines were extremely long because they have developed that culture of voting from, well, way back when they came on the boat with Jan van Riebeck. We don't, and we are still new, and we need to implement that culture of voting and understanding that we have to go and we have to make our voices heard, regardless of whether sometimes we feel that, uh, you know, the government is not working for us. We have to chop, we've got to change, and we have to keep trying. So we must do that. Your impact in Parliament, and I'm going to assume that you're going to have more people in Parliament. I'm going to assume that, right? I mean, so absolutely. <laughs> so I'm making that assumption that you're going to have more people in Parliament. The next five years, you've had that impact that you had in the last. What are you going to look at as like the defining themes for the next five years? Well, definitely the expropriation with land without compensation, the legislation must be finalized, the constitutional amendment must be finalized, and those are things that we will definitely do with it, like we are going to push as soon as the six uh, parliaments start. Uh, the issue of free decolonized education, you know, getting rid of student debt and all the, um, you know, the issues that are, are tagged along with that. The issue of gender-based violence and gender equality, so those are things that, you know, we have... Um, spoken at length in our manifesto and those are things that we will prioritize as soon as we get in there. So I mean like look what we did with 31 MPs in the parliament and that includes the NCOP. What are we going to do with 100? Like you can only imagine. Thank you. Oh, and I want to fight with Power FM. Don't finish the conversation. Put it back on. So, there was a show this afternoon. Was it the afternoon one o'clock show? I don't know. There was a lady that does the show. I was driving to Orange Farm. And it sounded like Power FM is like all on this whole ANC thing, like what's happening? So she's talking about young people not going out to vote. You take like four callers, they're all ANC callers, all pretty much saying the same thing. And you're only reading tweets about uh, those people or the young people who are saying that they are going to vote uh, ANC. So I did tweet about that and I, no, it's not right. We don't know Power FM to be like that and we hope that uh, it was just an isolated ev event and that, you know, that it's going to be fixed. I thought it was extremely, extremely inappropriate. Four callers in a row, all saying pretty much the same thing. Oh, I'm voting for her, her because of her, her. Yeah. Thank you. Noted. And you better not cut that part off of the email.